Hi traders, this is Nenad speaking and welcome to our Forex uh, weekly recap, trade ideas and setups. Today, uh, Euro dollar, pound dollar, Australian dollar, dollar yen and Bitcoin dollar. And you can see that we had, uh, well, not exactly a very, very, very fast week. But uh, then again, we had uh, successful trades for the previous week. And in addition to other trades that we also make in our ECS live uh, trading room, we are good to make uh, another, another good week in pips. And I'm happy with the current results, considering that some markets uh, might be slower, but still we are getting nice and positive pips. For example, we have secured uh, 30 pips on dollar cat counter trend trade today. So I am very happy that uh, during uh, July, we also see some very positive trades. And of course, our weekly Forex recap trading ideas webinar will always have free setups for all of you who join with Elite Currency. And uh, these setups are valid for today, tomorrow and early Wednesday. So before uh, we proceed further, let me uh, show you a quick uh, disclaimer. The CFD and Forex are leveraged products and can result in losses that exceed your deposits. And uh, have in mind that uh, all that you see here uh, on this webinar is my personal opinion only and my personal trading ideas. So uh, you need to know that uh, every trade you make uh, is uh, has and bears some uh, certain amount of risk because Forex is for trading Forex CFD and spot trading is trading leverage product. So please have in mind that you uh, understand the full risk disclosure. Okay, also uh, these are trading rules that we do with our uh, weekly recap. So you need to give price a breathing room. And uh, the term that I use uh, POC is uh, the, the point of confluence. That is the zone that we use for entries. As you can see here, uh, I always, uh, press i always show that on on uh, my monitor uh, you need to add a spread to your stop loss even if you trade via ecn account always add two to five pip spread uh, to your stop loss just to cover for it maybe small bounce that can happen when price gets close to your uh, stop for equities commodities indices and cryptocurrencies also guys uh, if you see that i post uh, the exact stop loss, always try to add a couple of pips to cover for potential uh, potential uh, uh, slippage or let's say uh, it can cause some uh, unnatural spikes. So you need to basically add a couple of pips just to cover for th those possible spikes that are not technical in nature, but those spikes happen when majority of traders uh, stop losses are hit and then the price uh, proceeds further in that direction before it drops. For example, the price is going up and uh, you have a stop loss. That stop loss is almost hit, but you know, the price just before the stop loss make a U-turn to the downside and ends your trading profit. It can happen. And even uh, with, with uh, our trades, a lot of times it happened in the past. So generally speaking, I think it's uh, good, uh, good to know that uh, Whenever you make a stop loss, you need to add two to five pips plus the spread depending on the market you trade. Uh, positional trades that we make here are called uh, trend trades. Alternative trades that we make here are called counter trend trades. Breakout levels and scalp trade levels should be done in a penalty of any position. Uh, for Forex, depending on time and volatility, we use profit stop after 20 pips, especially if you uh, if you trade on uh, EC on uh, intraday markets. Also have in mind that uh, it's always advised to protect uh, your profits on intraday basis. For example, guys, uh, today on our ECS live trading room, I gave a signal for dollar cat long. I know that a lot of people thought that it will go down, but I made a counter trend trade. Uh, I actually went long and uh, based on my Camarilla MACD and we secured 30 pips. Uh, so uh, first we secure 20 pips and then we moved our stop loss to plus 30 pips. That is what I also suggest you to do, guys, because this webinar is being recorded. It will be uploaded to YouTube. And I know that there are a lot of people who watch it later. So if you manage your trade, always try to protect your profits. Let's say 20 pips is approximate uh, pip count for uh, moving the stop loss to your favor. 
So if the price moves, like let's say 25 pips, you move your stop loss to 20 pips, or if the price moves 20 pips in your favor, scale out. It means close the half of your trade, put the rest to break even plus one, thus securing a free ride. That is what we traders call securing a free ride. Also, whenever uh, the price uh, goes in your favor, just manually move your stop loss for, let's say, 10 pips. Uh, so that is the money management that I use. Of course, uh, everything uh, everything can uh, be very, very wrong if you actually do over leverage trades. So the best is to keep your risk under control because it doesn't matter if you make 200 pips. You can easily lose that 200 pips with one bad trade of 10 pips if you're if you're over leveraging, oversizing your uh, trades. So just use the leverage in a smart way. Also, uh, these setups are valid for today, tomorrow, and early Wednesday. Add these levels to your system. Pay attention to my Twitter updates and pips pool. The term that I use is the maximum available number of pips you could have made on my recap. This is what we have. Uh, what happened uh, during the last week? The markets were basically waiting for the NFP. Also, we had a Four July, uh, the national U.S. holiday. So you know, it's not like we had a fast moving markets. And uh, even with, with these slower moving markets, we still managed to grab uh, nice pips. And I, I am, again, happy how the things were considering that markets were very, very uh, slow, waiting for the NFP and uh, also uh, uh, waiting for uh, that uh, holiday to pass over. OK, so the holiday uh, was uh, it was U.S. holiday, but of course, because we trade uh, U.S. currencies mostly. Uh, usually during holidays, uh, uh, U.S. holidays, we will not see a uh, big movement. Uh, dollar yen. Uh, okay, so euro dollar was good for 30 pips. Pound dollar for minus 50 pips. Uh, dollar Australian dollar plus 40 pips. Dollar yen 30 pips. And uh, the XRP ripple didn't qualify. But guys, the total pip pool was not that big. 50 pips. Then again. Uh, for me, the, the Australian dollar was the trade of the week, okay? And now I will show you what exactly happened uh, during our trades. Let me see if I see any comments. Uh, yeah, just hi from Bob uh, and Matthias. Okay, guys, uh, I see still people coming in. So, uh, yeah, basically what I'm doing here is sharing the results for the last week, uh, okay, the 2nd of July, okay? Now... We can move further. Uh, so let's see uh, euro dollar. This is the euro dollar chart. This vertical line represents the time of our webinar. So I'm always giving you uh, pre-fact setup. So the setups before they happen. And this is the first one. This is euro dollar. So you can see on the chart euro dollar. We had a sell or buy. Uh, actually, our sell was qualified at this spot here. OK, this was the spot where our sell was qualified and the price dropped not by a big pip count. But then again, we managed to grab at least like 30 possible pips because there was a change of trend and the price continued to go to the upside. OK, then, uh, yeah, that was the time when uh, basically uh, European Union had a very positive news regarding German Chancellor uh, Miss Merkel, uh, Merkel, and of course, uh, uh, basically whatever comes good in European Union, uh, it will always reflect positive on uh, the, the European United Currency, the euro. So basically, whenever you see good news for Euro for the European Union, you will see euro dollar going up, and this is basically what we cannot uh, have any influence at but then again that is why i say protect your profits when you're in profit for example today you saw what happened with the gbp dollar G gbp dollar went uh, was was going very very strongly to the upside and then uh, the very important person uh, mr boris johnson resigned and that caused a huge spike to the downside in the GBP dollar. Guys, that's the way how it goes. Sometimes you simply cannot predict what will happen, especially because there is the battle between hard versus soft Brexit, uh, versus hard versus soft Brexit. And 
every every person every person has a different opinion how this brexit can go every influential person and uh, basically Ms. Theresa may she is the prime minister she wants to go with a softer brexit keeping uh, trading deals between the, the uk and the european union while mr boris johnson uh, he was a little bit harder and uh, he wants to have a hard brexit he resigned you know it's not good for the gbp dollar overall and you saw a big spike to the downside. Uh, yes, I mean, uh, Gulag, uh, you're right. It is due to UK conservatives having enough support to trigger confidence, but also because Boris, uh, Boris Johnson resigned. That was the thing. That is the primary thing why the, the GBP went down. And now I can see that the GBP dollar is uh, around uh, 32.15. So guys, it is a 150 pip drop just on a single news. And it means, again, guys, it means that you should protect your profits. Always, don't forget it. Listen to me, guys. I've been in this business for a long time. Uh, everything that I, that I, that I teach you, I, I, I basically learned from my own mistakes. You know, it's like, you know, <clears throat> if, you, if you hadn't protected and you, have, and you were long, on the GBP dollar, you would have suffered a huge loss now, especially if you went with a little bit over leverage trade. And we all saw how the GBP dollar went up uh, today early morning. So, you know, always pay attention to it. That is why price action is the king and why why I went the long on the dollar cap because, well, guys, I saw support and I didn't want to risk anything with the GBP dollar. So I went with some pair that hasn't had a big risk today, considering that only in a couple of days we will see probably uh, Bank of Canada will hike rates. So I expect dollar cat to go more to the upside, but that's another story. <clears throat> okay, so this was the euro dollar. Now let's get back to the second slide. It was the GBP dollar. Uh, basically on the GBP dollar, we had a sell again. Uh, before the, the GBP dollar went up, this sell was good for, let's like, say, 15 pips. But I cannot say that 15 pips was a good trade. So because of that, uh, I count GBP dollar as a loss. So basically, it's minus 50 pip loss. Then again, you see that, that there was no uh, further momentum for the bears to proceed to the downside. And the price went heavily to the upside. And we had a losing trade on the GBP dollar. The Australian dollar, the trade of the week, definitely the Australian dollar. I was telling you that I was that I was short uh, basically on rallies. And I still think that uh, the Australian dollar should drop, especially because of the, for all of you who follow uh, fundamental analysis and fundamental reasoning behind uh, price action and price action technicals, you know, guys, that uh, there is always uh, the danger of uh, Chinese stocks going down, uh, HSI index, Hang Seng index going down. When it happens, the Australian dollar will also go down. And also the trade war between the US and China is not good for the Australian dollar because the Australia, Australia is very, very trade dependent. It's not good to be caught in between the trade war between the US and China. So I think that... Uh, now, this movement in, in Australian dollar should be just a correctional move be, be, before it goes possibly below 7.30. I, I mean, it's, it's a bit rangy, but uh, 73.00 should be compromised maybe in next weeks. If not, then the Australian dollar will probably get back. If it, if it goes above 7.650, uh, then it will be very neutral on intraday to intraweek time frame 7530 is the level is a stop loss level for any short trade so this was also my trading idea for uh, the for the last week the australian dollar downtrend uh, 7400 was a sell position we had a sell exactly at the poc zone and the price made some head and shoulders spike draw down but then again it went into a profit closing a total for 40 pips 40 possible pips for the Australian dollar. Dollar yen, again, very slow mover. The, the dollar was on holiday uh, for July, a uh, big holiday in the US. And uh, then uh, the market was waiting for the NFP results. And just after the NFP, the dollar spiked. 
not a heavy spike, but again, if you were caught in a trade, uh, you should have you should have you should have not been uh, stopped out because uh, trades were uh, went in profit. So dollar yen went in profits again. Uh, you see here, guys, watch here, 11050. It went uh, close to stop loss, but it didn't catch our stop loss, and then. Uh, the spike to the upside happened. So again, I'm happy uh, what we had also for the dollar yen uh, last week. Uh, okay. Yeah. Let's move on, guys. The final one that I prepared for you last week was uh, the ripple versus dollar. The ripple versus dollar. Well, you can see uh, I was I, I knew it, it would drop. I mean, knew I was like predicting it would drop and uh, but my levels uh, haven't been caught. Basically, uh, 57.85. I was I was thinking about 57.85, but then again, it went to 51.64 and then dropped. So again, maybe some of you took the trade here. Uh, it's it's not like it is uh, 43.00, but then again, I don't know. For this is, for me, this is a a uh, trade that ha hasn't been qualified. And uh, my final result for the last week is here. And uh, this is a total of 50 pips. Again, not a great result, not a big result, but it was good because markets were slow and we were waiting for the NFP and it was the NFP week. So again, it was good. Let's see what will happen this week. I prepare setups for you. And uh, yeah, uh, let's see if I have any questions. Uh, Andy is asking, how is it going, big man? Thank you, Andy. It's going very well. And I hope that you are also fine that you're doing well. Uh, basically, I'm uh, very, very active uh, also with my elite currency and also uh, very active outside of trading. Uh, basically, I have a lot of things. And don't, don't forget, guys, if you sit a lot, if you really are into trading, you need to move a lot also. Uh, it's also like, uh, you know, uh, if you sit for uh, seven, eight hours per day, try to practice, uh, do some aerobic exercises, something that will move your body at least uh, each day, uh, two to three hours per day. It's, it's a must, guys. You, you need to know it's a must. So uh, I'm very active on both sides, uh, on my business side and on my personal side. So, yeah, if, if I just... If I just watch, if, if I were just watching the screen, that wouldn't be good. So you always need to have a break after a trading day. If you made profits, okay, uh, then please uh, protect your profits. Just step outside and and uh, step outside. Do a, something for your body. And tomorrow is next day. So you need to be very active outside of trading. This is the euro dollar, and you can see here now euro dollar is in uptrend. So we might see a buy around 1690, stop loss 1645, TP 1850. But guys, I would sell at 1850, and I'm thinking about a good sell around 1850. And I will show you why. Just let me uh, silent my mobile phone because it's really it, it really keeps ringing. And yeah, so this is basically um, here. Okay, so euro dollar. You see, the euro dollar now is at the bottom of the Bollinger and Bands, but I don't see any POC zone here. The POC zone is exactly uh, a little bit down uh, here, guys. You see, uh, the price projection is here. It is the middle band, and also this is weekly L3. So I would say this is the POC zone here. If we uh, put a line here, this is an order block here. This is also, guys, an order block. So you see, this. This is the zone where we might see some rejection on the euro dollar. So if we want to short euro dollar, I say uh, let's short it a little bit, a little bit uh, more to the downside. That is much better option than to short it. Uh, sorry, going uh, to go long than to go long now. Although I'm not saying that it couldn't go up from this spot. It just for me much better confluence zone is here especially because it's end of trading day. I know euro dollar is bullish. It dropped probably because of the GBP dollar weakness. So again, I, I, would, I would still wait a little bit down for a bigger confluence before making 
a, a, a long trade on euro dollar. And of course, counter trend trade will happen here, guys. I'm waiting for this level. 1850, if it happens, well, I will be shorting it. Because for me, this looks like a nice counter trend trade opportunity. But again, uh, let's wait because we are still not uh, sure whether the market will spike here or it will go down. But either way, long, short. Okay, next one, guys, is the GBP dollar. The GBP dollar is mixed. I cannot say it's an uptrend. I cannot say it's downtrend. Due to Brexit, uh, due to a lot of things happening in the, uh, with uh, the UK, uh, I might say that GBP dollar can be traded both ways. So it is definitely mixed. We can see a downtrend. We can see an uptrend. The same this on the same chart. It's not like it's ranging. It's like it's changing its bias on the news. Uh, let's say positive news for the GBP dollar. Wow, it will go shoot up. Uh, a, a single neg negative news. Wow, it will go down. So it's not like it's ranging. It's like it has it has both uh, bullish and, and bearish trend in the same day. And look at this. This is the GBP dollar intraday chart. Guys, what, what do you see here? This is uptrend indeed. If you watch the sidestep of the Bollinger Band, also the GBP dollar daily, guys, is still inclined to the upside. It's weakening, but wow, watch this. Three black crows. Uh, this is the bearish candle configuration. And uh, honestly, guys, I think that the price might turn down. I don't know really what can happen with the GBP. I only know that there are a couple of levels that might be in play and uh, 3170 potential buy, 3330 is potential sell. That is what I can see from the GBP chart. Uh, I cannot trade uh, the GBP now, although this, if it drops here, as I say, it could be a long trade. But guys, if you, if you, if you, want to trade the GP, then please do it with a lower risk, uh, initial risk, because this can be a little bit, you know, uh, hard to trade, especially if you're not close to your PC or your mobile phone, and you're not able to protect your profits once you're in profit. So that is why I'm saying uh, it's much better to, let's say, uh, wait for a clear, clear confirmation in this zone here and then go long. I don't know. I'm not sure into this move. I think because of these three big bear, bearish candles, this could be a corrective move and the GBP will proceed to the downside. It looks like it for me. But again, possible long and 33.30 is a sell. Okay, this could be a retest of weekly H3 and uh, the upper Bollinger for our band. Then it's a short trade. Uh, the Australian dollar, I, I, I mean, I might be a little bit you know, stubborn with the Australian dollar, but uh, what can I tell you guys? Uh, really, uh, if, if, what can I tell you that I don't repeat myself for a hundred time? Trade wars, China, HSI, index, Chinese stocks dropping, the Australian dollar is weak. I'm, I'm still inclined for a sell, especially, especially because Two uh, weeks ago, we saw the break of the M bearish on weekly chart. And let me show you the weekly time frame. Uh, this is, guys, the weekly time frame. Just watch this, guy. No, monthly. Sorry, guys. Monthly time frame. Watch this. This is monthly time frame. Big, big, big bearish rejection from the upper Bollinger Band. And then go to weekly time frame. And let's see this. Uh, sorry. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm talking about the Australian dollar. Monthly. You see M, rejection from this side, M. And even if you go to weekly, you will again see M. Watch this. It still needs to go more down if we want to follow price action, guys. Because the break of, of M pattern on a weekly chart, can, it, it should be much stronger than this. This is, I don't know why, now it's risk on. I know it's risk on. That is why we see a spike in, in the Australian dollar. But the overall picture, guys, is not good. Watch these guys here. This is M, the break of M, and also the break of this weekly candle here. 
Watch this. It should go more to the downside. That is why I'm a little bit stubborn with sell. And especially guys on, on, on this intraday time frame. It went here, yeah, it's bullish. But you see, even if it's bullish now, it still needs to drop to over 7400 if it wants to go more to the upside. I'm not buying this. I, I just want to sell it here. So for me, this is it, guys. If you want to buy, then the price really needs to go lower. For a sell trade, it should go close to 7500. That is what I see. And really, when I when I take a weekly outlook uh, mixed with the intraday to intra week charts, I really see shorts. I cannot help myself but short the Australian dollar. Dollar yen. It's in uptrend, uh, potential buy, and I still think that dollar yen could go up towards 111.60, where we might be selling it. But then again, this is the dollar yen close to the POC zone now. You see, guys, it's it's at the upper band now. But if it drops here, close to the middle Bollinger Band, it's going up. Also, you see the daily is up. I think that here exactly it could spike towards 111.60. It's it's a little bit higher than weekly H5 because on a four-hour time frame, let me show you. Not here, it's better seen on daily time frame. Here. You see a lot of weeks here, a lot of sellers in the history. So I think that the price could go more to the upside. Buy here. Of course, it needs to go through all these levels. Protect your trade once you're 30, 40 pips in profit or 20 pips. And I think that the dollar yen could go more to the upside. That is my opinion indeed. Uh, I will answer your questions. Just let me finish my slides here. The last one is the, bit, the, the Bitcoin dollar. Uh, for all of you who trade uh, CFDs on the Bitcoin, it's the Bitcoin dollar. Potential sell, potential buy. And this is it. I, I will show you uh, the Bitcoin dollar right now. I, I think I need to actually switch to the MT5 yeah, just for showcase purposes. Give me a few seconds, guys. The Bitcoin dollar, I will open it. Yeah, now I need to wait. Okay, doesn't matter. Let's wait. Yeah, this is it. The Bitcoin dollar. You see a lot of lot of sellers here. This looks like a bullish pattern. But don't forget, guys, that Watch this. This doesn't look very, very bullish. You see, it is it is showing like some sort of of uh, a channel, but it looks to me like a potential megaphone on the top. So for me, this is a sell if you want to sell it. Watch this. A lot of sellers here, guys. A lot of sellers. This is the zone where sellers reside. You see here, selling, 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 selling. So this could be a sell indeed. Okay. If it goes here, 67.50, guys. All of this region is a sell. And I think it would go more to the downside if it breaks this trend line here you have multiple trend lines this is head and shoulders fail but then again it could drop if you want to go long yeah this is a potential long trade 6390 stop 62 tp 67 so uh it needs to go more to the downside okay and then it could spike up but again, as I say, uh, you need to wait for a sell first. And I'm, I would be selling it. For me, this is bearish. Okay, now your questions, guys. Velislav is asking about Euro New Zealand. Okay. Euro New Zealand. Okay, let's see Euro New Zealand. 
Euro New Zealand, Euro, Euro, Euro. Yeah, this is the Euro New Zealand is bearish. Definitely bearish sidestep, stepping down, lower lows, lower highs. Make the bearish show. This, this is sell. I would go for a sell around 72.05. That is a sell. So watch for that. Velislav, this could be a sell trade here on Euro New Zealand on a pullback to the upside. Uh, looking bearish to me, indeed. Yeah, looking bearish. Uh, Venchislav is asking WTI and DEX. Yes, of course, WTI and DEX. This is DEX first. Looking bullish, but here this is resistance. You see, 12, 5, 8, 1, this is resistance. And oh, this is monthly and weekly. Uh, mark these levels, guys, if you trade DEX, mark these levels. This is a short trade here. Of course, you need to protect your profit, but I'm I I'm I'm really 90% sure that if it doesn't make a big candle to the upside, if it if, if it slowly grinds towards uh, these two numbers, monthly H3 and weekly H3, sell trade initially would go in profit. Then we don't know if it will go more to the downside, but then again, it could reject. Maybe this is the trend line. If it rejects here, wait for a trend line break and it will proceed further down. Trend lines, guys, uh, are actually used as also continuation cues, not just for entries, but also as continuation cues. You make an entry, you see a trend line, trend line is breaking, you are making a continuation move, okay? Especially with the Tom DeMarc trend lines that are short trend lines made on intraday charts, TD trend lines, it's called, they are good. This is TD trend line. Okay, and this could go if it breaks, it will go further down. Uh, I will, I will, I really need to make a new series also price section training school revised webinars. And we at Elite Currency are planning to do a complete overhaul of price section training school. Uh, while I was doing that with Admiral Markets, it is a single most popular webinar series on their YouTube channel. And I'm thinking to, to revise it on YouTube to do complete overhaul of price action training school starting from September. You will be notified. You will see a lot of information that you haven't, that basically you, you, you don't know it even exists. You will see the information is and will be, I promise, a top notch, top quality. And there will be a lot of good presence with price action training school revised. And uh, the good thing is we will also trade it on ECS live and we will also trade it on um, uh, this uh, weekly recap. But the template, I'm already finished. It's, it's a complete price action template. It doesn't use any indicators except for price action channels, trend lines, Fibonacci. And that is a ultimate top notch tool for price action trading. It, it will be price action trading school revised exclusively on elite currency starting from September. I think if anything, if everything is good. And if everything goes with our plans. Okay, so uh, this is okay. This is it again. And yeah, one more thing. Price action guys is mostly traded on higher time frames, like four hour time frame. Of course, it's it's Camarilla MACD. It's my primary method, but for four hour trading, Camarilla MACD light and P P pets. I call it pets. Uh, will be of course and are my primary methods of trading. So uh, stay tuned, of course, uh, for uh, the DEX. Possible rejection if it closes above weekly H3 on a four hour candle, it will be bullish and it will go further up. So, watch for either rejection on four or four hour close above weekly H3 for a further continuation to the upside. Next question uh, WTI, the oil. Yes, 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 yes. Let me see. This is WTI. Okay, so uh, ranging price action. Definitely, I, I took a look, quick glance today uh, and i see that this is a ranging price section you have the mini range here this is your range and obviously below this should go more down to the monthly l371 33 
above this level, it will go up. So now it's trapped. It looks bullish, but it's also bearish at the same time. You see, this is the range. You don't see any clear pattern, anything here that could tell me, okay, this could go up or this could go down. This is simply a range. Nikola is asking, if you combine the euro with dollar and the Japanese yen, shouldn't the euro yen be, uh, shouldn't euro yen be the strongest then? Uh, well, uh, I didn't take any big trades on the euro yen. Yet again, I might take a look here and I, let me just see euro yen. Yeah, this is strong, but we don't have a confluence for going up, for going uh, long now. Uh, definitely this is uptrend, but if you want to go, uh, this is level to go and look for short trades for more upside action. Again, middle line, at least 129.40. This is a level to go long. Uh, it already went up indeed, but uh, honestly, I didn't trade it because I didn't see a pullback to go long. I, I, I never go long if I don't see a pullback. So that is why I decided uh, to go short and I'm still uh, to go long with the dollar cat and I'm still long with the dollar cat complete counter trend trade opportunity and the price is going up. Okay, so that would be it guys. I hope that I explained everything. I'm, I, I'm, I was trying to keep it uh, simplified. So I hope that uh, this will help you out. I will roll slides again. And of course, uh, guys, I hope that we will have another profitable week. So this is Euro dollar. This is the pound dollar. This is the Australian dollar. This is the dollar yen. And this is the Bitcoin, okay? With trader terms, Euro dollar, okay? It's called fiber. Pound dollar cable, Australian dollar Aussie, dollar yen ninja, and the BDC dollar. We don't have any nickname for this, but maybe uh, traders will make up a name in near future. And the last question for today: What about gold? Okay, I will I will uh, give you a quick tip about gold. This is you see a big spike down. Obviously, gold was overstretched here, and now I expect some further correction towards 1250 zone. 1250 zone, okay? If it drops here, try to watch for some reversal patterns for a trend trade around 1250. But now it looks like it's going down. It looks like it's going down. Gold being a dollar counterpart, of course, dollar down, gold up. Now gold is having a correction. Watch for a potential, potential uh, trade here. Uh, for a BDC, as I said, for a BDC dollar, sorry, I would, I would definitely uh, go short. Uh, I, I think that the BDC dollar is bearish, and uh, definitely uh, the price action on the BDC dollar is showing uh, some possible correction. But you see, this is a shorting zone. A lot of sellers here until it breaks up it will drop it needs to proceed above this uh, horizontal line in order to go further up but if it breaks this trend line it will go down ah, i do, i didn't know hoodle uh sorin is saying that the bdc dollar nickname is hoodle i didn't know that hoodle hoodle what is that i don't know why what is the logic between hoodle or hoodle really i didn't know that and Daniel Dollar Cat, okay. Um, as I said on ECS Live, I did a call, a trading idea uh, for the Dollar Cat. Currently, I'm uh, on my account, other account, I'm 35 pip in profit here on the Dollar Cat. And I still think the Dollar Cat could go more to the upside. This is 31.20, 31.30 is the zone. If it, if it breaks 31.30, it will go up. If it doesn't break 31.30, it will drop. But definitely uh, for me, uh, this was a counter trend trade already happening. The zone for buying was 30, 70, 30, 80, but now it already went up. So let's see, 31, 30 is basically our next spot to see whether uh, the dollar CAD, so popular lunar caddy will go up or reject. Okay, guys, so that would be it. 
thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for visiting webinar. Of course, as always, this webinar will be uploaded. And as always, guys, I wish you a very, very good week ahead. Uh, I wish you uh, to trade safe. Do not all leverage. Follow me, follow Chris and us on Elite Currency. And I promise always to deliver the best possible content for all of you. Cheers, guys. And as always, trade safe.